Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are getting an update from Outback Goldfields, traded on the CSE under the symbol OZ. I am chatting with the President and CEO, Chris Donaldson. Now just to remind everybody, Outback is focused in, uh, in and around the Fosterville gold mine in Victoria, Australia. Company holds four projects in total, and right now the company has work programs ongoing at three of these projects. Most recently, the news that came out June 22nd about the commencement of the exploration program at the Ballarat West project. Now, one thing that caught my eye within that news release is that within 10 kilometers of this Ballarat West property, there's been over 17 million ounces of gold that have been produced, not just explored and discovered, but produced. And Ballarat West remains completely underexplored due to widespread yet shallow cover. Chris, let's start off there. This project, underexplored, but in a good area around a bunch of gold mines, What's the exploration program going to look like here as you get on site? Uh, hey, Corey, thanks for, for having me here. Um, yeah, we're pretty excited. Our, our phase one exploration program is is really uh, in, in full swing now. So as, as you mentioned, we're, we, we've just launched on our, our third out of our four properties that we have, and that's uh, Ballarat West. And and really, you know, Ballarat West, is it's a big property. It's 45,000 uh, hectare. Uh, project that we have, and and yeah, what's surprising to us as well is is the fact that it's is virtually unexplored and certainly underexplored, despite the fact that uh, you know three of the mines you know within five to ten kilometers have produced over 17 million ounces. Most of that has come out from the Ballarat uh, mine, which is still in operation today, and and that property is is really the one that our uh, chairman um, <clears throat> Craig Perry was interested and from the from the beginning he believes that it has our our, our greatest chance of finding a multi-million ounce uh, deposit um, there's a couple of them right, right right adjacent to it and it's pretty indicative of what's happening in the gold fields uh, right now so you know of course the gold fields were you know highly prolific you know from 1850 to about 1920 when when everybody was mining this alluvial gold that was at or near surface and then it was essentially mined out, um, you know, with the techniques that they had available at, at that time. And that's because they were hitting cover. Uh, and that cover was generally a, a basalt uh, cover that they would hit. Sometimes it was the water tables. So, um, of course, six years ago, Fosterville made this incredible discovery of the Swan Zone and, and made them the, the highest grade, highest margin mine in the world. And it started this modern day uh, exploration uh, rush that's gone on there. So back to our property here. So we've got this, you know, property that that is ideally located. Um, and, and the question is, why has nobody really explored it? And if you look at uh, a map on it, um, there's all these historical workings on, um, that, that trend north south. Uh, and are parallel to each other. And, and in the case of our property here, there, there's two sections that, that you see the historical work and it looked like they just stop right at our, our border. Um, of course, that's just a, you know, a, a, a line that we've put in over top of a map. Um, and it doesn't really stop uh, because of the line, but it just stops because what happens there is it dips under cover. It dips under the the, the, the basalt there, and uh, and we believe it, it 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 does extend up and through the property. So, our exploration program right, we're just getting started. We're do, doing a number of things um, just to confirm the the uh, uh, the structure there uh, to to ensure that the, these structures do in fact uh, extend onto our properties. Um, and, you know, it'll be a combination of a number of different things and, in, 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 you know, starting with soil samples and, and then doing some some seismic work. And, and uh, we've already done some some geophysics on it uh, a, as well. So we're, we're, we're excited to get on that. This is all uh, with the goal of, of identifying some some drill targets that that we'll follow up on uh, in, in the fall once once we get those targets uh, uh, identified. Okay, so I will post that map. It's figure one within that most recent news release, and it really just simplifies where that target is, and that main target seems like it's that whole southern area of the project because of all those past workings. Now, with the hope of drilling, let's say, by fall, or at least building up those targets, 
what's your anticipation here? Obviously, you're going after high grade results, but what do you think? How deep are you going to have to drill? Can you give us any more insights on what your guys' expectations could be for this? Yeah, yeah, it might be a bit bit early for that. I mean, that's what we're trying to identify. But in, in generally, the the, uh, the the cover starts at about 10 meters, uh, sometimes up to 40 meters, and can go from 10 to 80 meters at deep. So while it is, you know, we are certainly going deeper, it's it's usually, you know, you can get below cover within about 150 meters. Okay. Um, now, one other aspect, again, is all the exploration and discovery that has been made here, but that deals with this whole area, right? And the company is working on two other projects currently, the Yungrun project and Glen Fine. What updates can you give us from these projects? Yeah, so Glenfine, we're you know we had about four thousand meters planned on that. We've just wrapped. Basically, we had two targets there. We've just wrapped up on the first target, uh, which is Glenfine South. We were drilling in and around a historic mine there uh, called the Glenfine South mine, which had produced about forty thousand ounces at sixteen gram per ton. Uh, we're moving our drills, or two drills, uh, a diamond drill and an RC drill, up to the. Uh, uh, British banner target and we'll mobilize that over the next couple of weeks we're just working on an access road and uh, it is rainy season down there so um, uh, it's it's a little more challenging to get into some of these paddocks but we expect to, to start drilling on that in a couple of weeks so that'll be the second half of, of the Glenfine targets and then up in Ewan Groon um, again we're, we're, we're centered around a, a historic mine or a, some workings uh, called Golden Jacket it was a an area that had produced the I think they mined 1400 ounces so not a ton but at 250 gram per ton so we've already done the geophysics on it we, we did a lidar survey which gives, gives us an idea of the historical uh, workings in the area and then <clears throat> planning within a couple of weeks to do a rab survey and, and what we do with that is is this is shallow drilling at about 10 10 or so meters and we're looking for for uh, markers uh, gold markers and in this case we're hoping for uh, high levels of arsenic or antimony or hopefully both uh, so we'll do about a 300 hole uh, grid in and around that uh, golden jacket uh, working to, to to identify some targets uh, as well so you know it's we've got certainly going to have a busy summer here and then we'll have steady stream of, of news coming um, out uh, for the balance of the year okay and then a lot of drilling too and that's what's key because drilling i think we all know exploration especially that's what can drive these exploration stocks especially new discoveries we've seen some other discoveries in that area too you look at mandalay resources or e79 resources those have experienced some good drilling success and the share price has really responded to that you actually recently just updated the presentation outlining the market performance of these stocks Walk us through just how well some of your neighbors have done in terms of exploration success. Yeah, so I mean, you get kind of a, you know, obviously we hope we're the ones who make the next uh, big discovery, but the benefit of the areas is that, um, you know, it's 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 relatively new again. At least a new lens is being put on it, and the you know the, the benefit of the area is that the size of the prize is as good as it gets. It's a Fosterville uh, style deposit, which is highest grade, highest margin in the world. The knock on the area has been there's only one of these, and is there another one? And about a month ago, Mandalay Resources, and they have a, a mine called Costerfield, and, and um, they've been mining. They hit a zone that I believe they're calling now the Shepherd Zone, and they hit uh, almost a meter at 427 gram per ton. Um, and six meters at 24 gram per ton. So there's, you know, a lot of excitement around that. They've, you know, doubled in the last six, eight weeks or so in, in their share price. Uh, looks like they're onto another Fosterville style deposit there. And then just last week, uh, you know, a peer of ours, E79 Resources, they've got a, a similar land package and have done a good job. Um, but, you know, they went from 24 cents, they were actually, their market cap was below ours, uh, you know, about 10 days ago, and then they went up 250%, you know, almost to a dollar fifty on a great discovery, and they hit 11 meters at 160 gram per ton. So, 
Um, we've had a good run uh, because of that. It started when Mandalay came out and, and, and certainly we got a lift after E79. And this, of course, is in a backdrop when gold is, has dipped over the last little bit. We've, we, we've gone to 30 cents to, to almost 60 cents as well. So we, we do, um, you know, anybody has a discovery, you know, all boats tend to, 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 to rise or all tides uh, tend to rise on, on that as well. So, Chris, before we get out of here with all the work that is planned and the move into drilling, how much cash is the company Outback Goldfield sitting on to move through these programs? Yeah, so I mean, at the beginning of the or end of last year, we raised eleven million dollars. Our plan is to put six million of that into the ground this year. Um, I think we have just under eight million was our, our last uh, reported financials. So, so we're well financed for for this exploration program for the next twelve months. Perfect. Chris, uh, thank you for the update. And full disclosure, I am a shareholder of Outback Goldfields. If anybody has any follow-up questions, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. I will get those answered for you, and we will follow up as more news hits the market, especially when it comes to progressing with these exploration programs. Chris, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Gord.